Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash pro revenge. This story was posted by user The Lighter Side. Mock my mother's death? I bankrupt you. My now ex-wife Kate and I moved to an apartment in 2010. The house as a whole was a renovated townhouse, split between two sides with two apartments on the bottom and two apartments upstairs. I wasn't the biggest fan of the apartment as it was a much older building that I had ever lived in, but I quickly adjusted to the wood creaking throughout the night. On the initial walkthrough we noticed that the only problem was that there was a dip in the bathroom ceiling. The landlord Jay promised us that he would get it fixed ASAP. One year to the day that we moved in, there was a loud crash at 4am. The bathroom ceiling had collapsed and there was tiling and wood all over the floor and in the bathtub. Now, Kate was typically the aggressive one, while I was more passive and laid back, and she kept calling Jay throughout the day. When she got in touch with him at around 9pm, she explained what happened and insisted that it be fixed immediately. Jay rebuffed, yelling that his girlfriend was a lawyer and he didn't need to do anything. Now, this is where I got mad. I went outside to have a cigarette and to call him myself. I feigned a relaxed demeanour and at first he began trying to talk to me as a bro and kept saying, dude, I'm going to get someone out there, but it's going to take a few weeks. When he couldn't sway me that way, he began yelling about his girlfriend and her knowing the law. What he was unaware of was that I had read the tenant law in my state and so as he tried to lie... I waited until he was finished, and I then recited the law stating that if an apartment was considered uninhabitable, then the landlord needed to pay for the tenant to stay in a place until it was resolved, meaning he would have to pay for us to stay in a hotel of our choosing every night until the ceiling was fixed. He tried to say that our upstairs neighbour Phil was the super, but he wasn't sure if he could get him down there that night. He placed me on hold and then came back a few minutes later and said that Phil and his girlfriend were out of state. I rang Phil's doorbell and asked, with Jay on speakerphone, if he was assigned as the super. He laughed and said, no. Dejected, Jay said he would have people out there the next day. Previously, he said they were busy for at least three weeks. There's more to this incident, but it led to two conclusions. One, if you're going to lie, there has to be consistency in your lie and make sure that the people you lie to don't communicate with each other. Two, This is where a feud started between me and my Kate versus him and his mother. She was the original landlord and gave the house to him so he could begin to make a side profit. Fast forward to a year later, Jay stopped coming to the house and his mom began doing the pickups. Around this time, my ex and I had been laid off and we were working with Social Security for food, health and housing insurance. We were approved for all three in April, but we could not get the cheque until May. When our typical cheque wasn't in the landlord's mailbox, he immediately gave a summons saying that he was taking us to court for eviction. The day we went to court, he had no lawyer, and going before the judge, here's a summation, or rather a non-verbatim account, of how the case went. Judge. Does the defence have a means to pay within 90 days of non-payment? Us. Yes, Your Honour. Hands over paperwork showing that we will be reimbursed for April and May. Judge. I see no problem. They are breaking no laws. Why are we here? J. Well, Your Honour, they have been bullying. Judge. I don't care. Unless they're breaking a law, then this case is dismissed. Suffice to say, J and his mother were not happy. Around this time in my life, things were tumultuous. My mother, who had been battling lung cancer for four and a half years, succumbed to it in June. This happened at roughly the same time his mum came knocking, looking for payment. I explained that I would leave the cheque in the mailbox when we got back from the funeral home and to please just respect my right to mourn. She took her fingers and began rubbing them together, pretending to play the world's smallest violin. I will not forget what she said next. Oh, my mummy just died. Woe is me. She probably had it coming. I don't care if your entire family is dead. I want my money. She smiled smugly proud with what she had just said. I saw red and my heart jumped into my throat. I went, grabbed the cheque and handed it to her in absolute shock that anyone would say something so fucked up. She'd finally managed to push a button that very few people I've known throughout my life have gotten close to pressing. I went into rage mode 
but not in the way you would expect. The revenge. We were always told that if a health inspector came by, not to open the door. I waited until August, since that was the month before the lease was going to run out and we knew they would not extend a renewal. I walked up the block to Town Hall to ask for a health inspection of our property. It was scheduled for several days later. Now, it's important to know several things. 1. I was friends with all of the tenants. Phil had moved out with his fiance, but the new tenant was a really cool girl around my age named Danny. Tom and Hannah on the other side of the downstairs floor had moved out in July and Jay was still looking to fill it. The only one who wanted to stay out of this was Rose on the upper right apartment. 2. I had gotten permission and her spare key so I could let the inspector in Danny's apartment and I knew that I could use the back staircase on the right side to let them in on Tom's now vacant apartment. 3. I also knew that Danny was moving out in September, a month after Kate and myself. The inspector came and it was glorious. He checked the exterior of the house, first noting that wires were exposed. There was an old empty dryer along with other odd clutter in the backyard. I bought him in the shared entrance and, as I was counting on, he noticed that the last inspected dated back to 1994. 18 years. This meant that for each year he did not have an inspection, there would be appropriate fines. For our apartment, we had black mould growing in our bathroom and the bubble in the ceiling had begun to regrow to problematic proportions. Upstairs, Danny's apartment was suffering from leaks in the ceiling and it looked like her bathroom ceiling was also on the brink of collapsing. We then went to the basement. The boiler was on the verge of exploding. There was flammable items along with gasoline and a pack of matches sitting right beside it. Two things that I did not know. One, the fire door that separated the two sides did not close all the way, rendering it moot. To be honest, I had never heard of a fire door until that day. Two, on the right basement side there was a toilet, a toilet that had blown up. It had coated the surrounding walls and the leakage prevented us going up to the floor via the right side. The entire time the inspector was photographing and writing constantly. We stepped outside and he said he needed to come back. When I asked why, he said he had run out of space to write down all the infractions. He had filled the front and had written an entire page on the back portion. I kindly and coyly asked, well, how much will it cost right now? He scratched his head and said, around 20 to 30k from what I can see, but it's probably going to be higher as this house was never licensed to be split into apartments. I thanked him and he was going to come back with a county inspector. We were gone when that took place, though I did ask him to send a copy with the list of violations to my new address. So we moved out at the end of August, but I got the updates from Rose. Because he was the current owner, he owed all current fines. And no one knew could move into the now empty apartments until everything was up to code. Because three out of four were vacant, he was losing four and a half grand in potential rent. He handed the property back to his mother and had to file for bankruptcy. Now, here's the other thing. Every time an old tenant left and a new one was coming in, an inspection was supposed to be done. Now that all of the financial burden fell on her, they looked into the records and she was fined for each time she had broken that rule. $750 per time. By the end of the year, Rose had moved out so the place was hemorrhaging money. I sat back, proud of what I'd done, and left it be. (laughs) Haha, no, fuck that. I wasn't close to done yet. I felt like I had destroyed Jay, but my real target had always been his mom. I learned that she had eight properties throughout three towns in my county. I went to each one, spoke to the tenants, and said I was a concerned tenant from another property, and asked if they had any problems with their apartments. Every person I asked described the apartment in very poor to intolerable levels, and that the mom was effectively a slumlord. She would ignore problems unless someone turned to litigations. She was threatened that they would summon the inspector, or, more often than not, the people would move out. She'd refuse their deposit and sink those into cosmetic repairs so that the apartment looked nicely furnished. People really fought back because she knew that the occupants were of upper lower class minorities. So, being the concerned person I was, I went to the inspector of the other two towns 
and asked for inspection to be done with at least one tenant, if not more, would be awaiting the inspector when they came. Turns out that she faced pretty much the same infractions on every apartment she owned. It turned out she actually had 12 apartments, but I initially only knew about the ones that fell within my county. The remaining properties in the next county over were given a mysterious heads up to perform a surprise inspection. From what I can tell, Jay's mom had been in the landlord business for about 35 to 40 years. That collapsed quickly. Since we moved literally one block down the road from our old one, I got to see Jay lose his primary source of income and have to claim bankruptcy, but also saw that his mother was also trying desperately to find a buyer for all of the apartments so she could pay off the fines. I learned two years later, 2014, that she too had to file for bankruptcy. Jay and his mother camped out in front of our next apartment two days in October of 2013 before she filed for bankruptcy. I'm guessing to scream at me and or Kate. So I called the cops and said there were strange people standing in a no parking zone and they kept looking up at the second floor. A cruiser swung by and told them to leave. I know I should have used the two months I spent monitoring everything to find a new job, but this was the one and only time I wanted to cripple a person where they hurt their most. Their wallets. I think I got my point across. None of this would have happened if you just fucking fix the ceiling before it collapsed, Jay. Too long, didn't read. Had a couple of slumlords. They pushed me to a place where I snapped. And so I went a bit crazy and bankrupted the slumlord and his slumlord mother as well. In the comments, Dejur1 says, I'm entirely disappointed that you didn't go outside and mimic playing the world's smallest violin. Hura Queen says, I would have made a tiny violin, wrapped it up all pretty and gifted it to her. Man, I had a bad experience with a landlord around the time my mother died as well, to the point that one day I was waiting for a plumber to leave my house so we wouldn't be late for the hearse. I wish I could have done to them what OP did to his landlords. I certainly had some things on them, but I just want to move on from it all and I always try to be the better person. And just like in the story, if they treated us the way they did, then they were treating other tenants like that too. One day, they'll get what they deserve. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.